Hello, everybody. Welcome to Worship Today at Trinity Lutheran Church and School in Litchfield Park, Arizona. We are continuing our summer series on the Nicene Creed, and today we have a great topic. We're going to be looking at Christology, the study of Christ, and how the Nicene Creed confesses the truth about the Son of God. And what we're going to look at is three words that are all over the New Testament that are used to describe Jesus. Lord, Jesus, Christ. Those three words are full of meaning and significance about understanding who Jesus is and what he has done for us. In fact, if you get your hands around all three of these words, Lord, Jesus, Christ, then you have gone a long way in understanding Christology. So that's our theme for today. We're going to be taking a look at oh, those three words, what they mean, and their significance for us because we're talking about our Savior, the Son of God, who has come into the world because he loves us. Today our theme is Lord Jesus Christ. Glad you're with us. We'll see you in worship in just a minute. Joy surrounds this holy place For our sins are washed away By the blood of God's own Son Jesus Christ, the Chosen One If Christ has set us free Then we are free indeed To worship Him with joy in this holy place Love unites this holy place As we seek the Savior's face Hearts are gathered here as one Sinners saved by God's own Son The Lord is present here His love is what we share And everyone is welcome In this holy place As we leave this holy place Filled with God's abundant grace May the gentle spirit of Jesus' sacrificial love Be manifest anew In all we say and Hi, everybody. Welcome to worship today. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. Just as he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies, the whole Christian church on earth, and keeps it with Jesus Christ and the one true faith. And in this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives me and all believers all our sins. And on the last day will raise up me and all the dead and grant me and all believers in Christ eternal life. This is most certainly true. God indeed forgives, renews, and restores each of us 
through his son, Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, believe that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our scripture lessons for today, we have several of them that are going to focus on our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll recognize most of these scriptures, I think. Here's one from Isaiah chapter 9. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And from Daniel chapter 7, In my vision at night I looked, and there before me was one like the Son of Man, coming to the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority and glory and sovereign power. All peoples, nations, and men of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. And in Colossians chapter 1, For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, where the thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. And this is how the book of Hebrews opens. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe. The son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. And after he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. And our gospel lesson for today is from the Gospel of John, the first chapter, beginning at the first verse. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testifies concerning him. He cries out, saying, This was he of whom I said, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. From the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but God, the one and only, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. This is the word of our God. Today, we join together in confessing the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Imagine if Jesus was not God, but rather just a good man, maybe even a special man that God blessed with some supernatural abilities. What would that mean? Well, it would mean that if Jesus was just a man and not God, that the Bible is a lie because the Bible teaches, as we've just heard, that he really is the true God. If Jesus was not God, then he never lived a perfect and holy life for you, and there is no righteousness for you. If Jesus is not God, then he did not take your place on the cross carrying your sins. Your sins and its guilt would still be on you. If Jesus is not God, then he's just a poor, miserable sinner like the rest of us. Those are some terrible thoughts, aren't they? But that is what the church was up against in the fourth century. A priest named Arius was teaching that Jesus was not fully God, but just an extraordinary man that God gave some special abilities to. 
His false teaching has been has known now as Arianism, but it was spread like wildfire through the Roman Empire in the three and three hundreds and the four hundreds. To defend the truth of Holy Scripture and to confess the truth about the Lord Jesus Christ, the Christian Church gathered together in what is known as the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. The Holy Spirit worked through this council to produce what we know today as the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed is an echo of Holy Scriptures. And the largest section of the Nicene Creed deals with the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Christian Church wanted to make it extremely clear that we believe, teach, and confess that Jesus is fully divine. He is God of God, light of light, very God of very God. The Nicene Creed also says this about the Lord Jesus. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ. Those three words that are used, Lord, Jesus, Christ, are the most common way that Jesus is referred to in the New Testament. These three words, in any order, it can be Christ Jesus the Lord, Jesus Christ the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, any order, doesn't matter. It appears 60 times in the New Testament. These three words capture the person and the work of the Son of God. These three words are a summary of who Jesus is and what he has done for us. That's why these three words are extremely important to know. So today, let's take a look at these three words. The words that Scripture uses over and over again the words that they used in the third century, in the fourth century, in the Nicene Creed to confess the deity of the Son of God. Let's start with Jesus. The name Jesus was given to the Son of God when he was born in Bethlehem. God named his son Jesus, which means Savior. His name signals and foreshadows the work that he will do for us. He is our savior. He is the one who will save us from our sins. The name Jesus reminds us of the human nature of the Son of God. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. Jesus is true man with a human body, just like all of us except without sin. Jesus was a historical man who lived on the earth in the country of Israel, in the city of Nazareth and Capernaum. He lived a holy life. He taught with great authority. He worked mighty miracles. He suffered and died on a cross for us and for our salvation. And then on the third day, he rose from the dead, never to die again. The name Jesus reminds us that the Son of God became a man, a true man, just like us, except without sin. He has come into the world to do the work of salvation. Jesus is a name that means Savior. And that's exactly what he has done for us. Because Jesus is true man, one of the things that that means is that he perfectly understands you. One of the ways the Bible teaches us the significance of Jesus's human nature is that he sympathizes with us. He understands you and your needs. And he invites you to pray for your needs and those of other people. 
as true man, he, he understands and empathizes with you. And as true God, he has the power to intervene and to help you. Jesus is true man. He understands you and he cares. He is kind and compassionate. The second word that's used to describe Jesus is a title, and it's the title Lord. It's also given to the Son of God. The title Lord is the name of God in the Old Testament, the God of the Exodus, who revealed himself as I am. When we call Jesus Lord, we are calling him and referring to him as I am. It's a reference to his deity, his divine nature. In other words, Jesus is 100% God, equal to the Father and equal to the Spirit. Just as Jesus was 100% man, just like us without sin, so too at the same time he is 100% God, equal to the Father, equal to the Spirit. He is the God-man at the same time. In no sense whatsoever is Jesus inferior to the Father or to the Spirit. The God who saved his Old Testament people has come into the world to save us all. The Lord, God himself, was born in Bethlehem for you. The Lord, God himself, suffered and died on a cross for you. The Lord, God himself, rose from the dead on the third day. The title Lord teaches us that Jesus is true God, who has come into the world to do the work of salvation for us. Now think about that for a minute. What a relief that is. What a relief that salvation is not dependent on us or our efforts. God himself is our savior. We do not need to spend our lives trying to save ourselves. The work has already been done by Jesus, the Lord God himself. You can have peace and you can have confidence and assurance that your sins are forgiven because God has done the work for you. Salvation is always a gift from God. That's what the word grace means. Salvation is by grace. It's given through faith in the Lord Jesus, God and man, who has done the work for us. A third word that the New Testament uses to describe the Son of God and the Nicene Creed uses to confess that truth to the world is the word Christ. The word Christ is a translation of the Old Testament Hebrew word Messiah. Both Christ and Messiah mean anointed. Jesus is anointed by the Holy Spirit to do the work of salvation for us and in our place. So when we say Jesus Christ, we mean Jesus is the Messiah. Remember that throughout the Old Testament times, ever since the Garden of Eden, God had promised to send the Messiah or the Christ who would rescue us all from our sins. By giving Jesus the title Christ, it's identifying him as the Messiah of the Old Testament, the one who fulfills all the Old Testament prophecies, promises, and hopes. It's like circling Jesus with a red marker and saying, this is the one. Put your faith in him. Or as John the Baptist put it, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The title 
Christ teaches us that Jesus is the Messiah of the Old Testament times, the one promised to come into the world, the anointed one who's going to save us all and do the work of salvation for us and in our place. That word Christ, it reminds us that God's word is true and trustworthy, that God kept all the promises, every single one of them in the Old Testament times. God kept those promises and Christ Jesus, the Lord, was born in Bethlehem. You can trust all of God's promises that he makes to you. They all come true in the Lord Jesus Christ. God promises that your sins are forgiven. God promises you a home in heaven. God promises that he is your father in heaven who cares about every single detail of your life. God promises that that you have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit and that you can live a holy and godly life. Every single promise of God comes true because God is true and trustworthy. You can trust him. You can put your faith in him. The word Christ reminds us of that. God kept every one of his Old Testament prophecies and promises. Lord Jesus Christ. These three words are some of the most important words in all of Scripture. It's the heart and the core of Christology, the study of Christ. They teach us who Jesus is and what he has done for us. 1,700 years ago, the one holy Christian and apostolic church used these three words to echo Holy Scripture, to confess the truth about the Son of God, and to defend the church against the false teaching of Arianism. Jesus is God, and the Bible is true. Jesus is God. He lived a perfect and holy life for you. Jesus is God. He did take your sins to a cross for you and in your place. And he rose again on the third day. Jesus is God. He is Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for revealing yourself to us as the one true and only God who has come into the world to do the work of salvation for us and for all people. Give us faith to know and to believe in you. Deepen our conviction in the truths that you teach us in your holy word. We thank you for the men and women throughout history who have boldly defended the truth and faithfully confessed the faith. Help us in our lifetime to stand firm and to boldly defend the truth and faithfully confess the faith. Amen. We join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you all now and forever. Amen. We'll see you next week in worship.
Salvation unto us has come by God's free grace and favor. Good works cannot avert our doom. They help and save us never. Faith looks to Jesus Christ alone, who dared for all the world atone. He is the one redeemer. What God does in His Lord demand and none to Him can render Bring wrath and woe on every hand For man the vile offender Our flesh is not those pure desires The Spirit of the Lord requires And lost is our Blessing.